So this will be my first furniture pieces in our new studio. And I am starting off with these three smaller pieces. I'm gonna share with you the ease of flipping smaller pieces for profit or just for your own personal use. And this is one of those types of pieces of furniture that you could almost find anywhere. We have an, an estate sale auction, we have Goodwill, we have a garage sale. You just never know where you're going to find secondhand furniture. Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. Oh my goodness, have I had fun creating in our studio. So it is not a complete studio yet, but that's okay. Still make do with what space you have. In today's video, I am bringing you three little furniture pieces that I painted and made over. Oh, these colors just have my heart, y'all. I can't wait to share them with you. You're going to start right off with this little cubby. Oh, I love those little bitty porcelain knobs. And we are in luck. Actually, it looks like they're not all there but they are all nine knobs are there and we lucked out that the bolts and the nuts are inside of it. And with as loose as some of these were, I'm surprised that they were all there. That was just a God wink moment. I just now need to remove the rest of them. It is always nice to find solid wood pieces and I believe today these all three are solid wood. So the first thing I'm starting off with is I'm giving this nice little cubby a good scuff sanding. Now that I have a moss scuff sand, I blew the extra sanding dust out of the picture. And now I'm just going to tape off. I want to um, just make some nice clean lines, protect the areas I do not want to get paint on. that I have everything taped off I'm going to go ahead and give it a wash personal preference you can do it either way tape first tape after whatever works for you so I just have Dawn dish soap hot water and then just giving it a nice rub down getting that nice and clean getting anything that would prevent my paint from sticking off Now because when I sanded this we have kind of different in textures, um, some raw wood, some stain, some top coat, I'm going to go ahead and get this sealed in with a couple coats of shellac to even out the porosity. Then after my shellac is dry I'm going in with some fine grit steel wool and just giving it a nice little smooth down. Sometimes that will raise the green of the wood and you can feel some texture so I just want to make sure that I'm smoothing it back down. So I recently did a table for my own house that I mixed some Sweet Pink and Smilk paint together. Though then I did three colors. In today's video I'm going to test out just doing two. So I'm going to do some basil and then I'm going to do in the green. And I'm just really looking for that classic vintage green.
after my first coat is dry, I applied a second coat. And I don't know, sometimes on raw wood, you don't really get the cracking and that um, chippiness, but that's okay. I absolutely love the color though. So I'm just gonna help it dry along using a heat gun. Now, I believe that milk paint isn't something that's going to look pristine. It's going to look aged. It's going to look wit war. Ah, uh, it's the look I am going for. So I'm just taking some 200 grit sandpaper and I'm just smoothing it down. Showing some of that wood underneath, some of the detailed edges, trying to make it look like it's been on there for a long time. Now to finish this piece up, I'm going to do a combination of clear wax and black wax. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the clear first. Milk, milk paint needs to be sealed in, so that's going to go ahead and seal it in. But to add a little bit more age and really bring out this color of green, I'm adding that black wax. So next up is this little piece, and it's just, it's little. Um, and I'm pretty sure it was a handmade, just like the first piece. It was just a handmade piece, and somebody built it because they had a purpose for it. But I love these little pieces. I think they're usually pretty easy transformations. Now mine is not to question why. Sometimes you don't know why. You just take it out and throw it away. So this piece definitely has some age to it. I can tell by the flat head screws, the tarnish that's on the screws. It's just a nice handmade solid wood little piece. And through the process, as I'm taking things apart, I'm assessing to make sure that things are solid. Does anything need to be tightened up? So these, these nails have come loose, so we're just gonna get them hammered back down. And then I know this piece is from a recent auction hop, so either we bought it with cobwebs and dirt all in it, or it accumulated in the move, or sitting in our other workshop. <laughs> Yet again, you just don't question it, you just clean it. For this piece, I'm going to switch to some 80 grit sandpaper. There is a lot of chunky top coat on here. Um, I'll do a close-up view here in a minute, but... oh. It definitely needed to be a little bit more than scuff sanded. It needed to be evened out. I don't mind the dents and the imperfections. I think that's going to be added character at the end. But you got to get that top coat off so that your paint will stick to this piece. And even though I hammered some of those nails back in, it's, they still came loose. So I'm just going to stick a couple brad nails in the place to make sure that it's holding this drawer together. Furniture flipping is not always for is not always for the weak by any means. So either strength wise of lifting furniture or squeamish wise of getting cobwebs and bugs off out of furniture.
Like I said earlier, it doesn't matter when you start to tape off. Sometimes, though, if you're impatient like I am sometimes, <laughs> I that's why I tape off first a lot of times is because sometimes the tape doesn't want to stick when it has been wet and I don't. I don't have the patience to always completely let it dry before I want to proceed on working on it. Just like my previous piece, we've got some raw wood, we've got some stain left, and we might have some top coat left. So I want to even out that porosity that my paint doesn't take funny. <laughs> so I'm spraying it with a couple coats of shellac to even out that porosity. And this wood is kind of raised. I can feel that it's not very smooth. So I'm just taking that fine grit steel wool over it to make sure that everything is smoothed down. It doesn't really take a lot to take that off. So how many of you were oohing and on over this beautiful green color? Oh my gosh, I was trying to keep it a secret, but oh, Carriage House, one of the new fusion colors. To me, it has that old timey classic look, which is definitely age appropriate on this piece of wood. Gorgeous color. Okay, so when it comes to the fusion paint, it's primer, paint, top coat, all in one. So it's just a wonderful, creamy paint, as you can see when I, it was going on. But I am a fan of distressing, and I want my piece to look old in age. So I've got 200 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander, and I'm just smoothing out, even though I don't have really a ton of brush strokes, I'm just smoothing it out until I do not see any brush strokes, and I want it to go down to some of that natural wood underneath. And this is not a step that you have to do with this paint. I just prefer to do it is I like to give it another protective coat, shine that what I just sanded down up with just some natural clear wax. It just really brings out that color. That is how I'm choosing how much I'm going to take off is if I can still see lines of the brush strokes. So it's not that because I sanded it, you can really, it kind of emphasizes them more. So I just keep sanding. Like I said, I want this to look like an, it's an old piece. I want it to look like it has aged over time. And while I'm in still in the sanding process, I like to remove my tape. I like to take some sandpaper where the tape and the paint have met. There's always that hard, crusty edge, and I just like to soften it up. And my final little that I'm going to do to this is put some of these little slides, glides on the bottom, it was just the raw wood sitting on the floor. And I think what will really make this look like it's been this way for 
many, many years is I have a stash of these porcelain knobs. I just need to clean them off with a Clorox wipe because you know they're thrifted items. And oh, do they just not make this look like a classic piece. down one more to go and I think this is just a nice three drawer chest of drawers so it could be a side table it could be a bedside an end table to your couch it could just be a nice little table just anywhere you need it it's just a nice size and it's heavy oh it is heavy it is solid wood y'all but as you saw, it was missing a lot of its knobs. So this one um, had been sitting in our shop for quite a while. That I do remember. I just, it got, had gotten tucked back. Um, that's why we needed to move into a bigger shop. You know, all of a sudden you get furniture pieces tucked in and you're like, you don't even remember you have them. Well, the upside is at least there's not very much hardware to have to remove. Um, the I'll deal with the staining issues inside the drawer when we get to that. But right now, I'm just going to take off the hardware that's left on. I told y'all this is the unglamorous part of making items over is this, is this. Though, luckily I'm not squeamish, but I know many who would have set this on fire than to have to deal with this. And I'm just laughing to myself because I know how many are thinking, why do you not have gloves on removing that, that cardboard piece that should have been removed? when it was first delivered to the house <laughs> but you know you know i just take my chances you just know that i am really going to clean this piece really really well so either we brought the friends with us or the friends came when the few weeks that we've been at the new house i'm not really sh i'm not really sure but we are surrounded by cornfields that that part i do know So now that I have the body done, I need to deal with the drawers themselves. I really envision this being a multi-use and I think the, the knobs make a difference. So I'm not going to try to find six knobs that match. I have some poles that I want to put on this. So I need to use some Bondo to cover up and fill in those holes. And if you wonder why I like a Bondo and I've been using Bondo a lot lately, is because the cure time is like within 15 minutes. Instead of watch, waiting for other spackle or putties to dry, Bondo just really dries really fast. And in no time you can start sanding and complete your project.
So it was the same process to get to this point, y'all. So now when I look at this piece, I really, because of the sharp edges, there's some detail on it. It really kind of screams masculine to me. I am not a furniture expert. I just like to make things over. But there's some little details on the foot of this that kind of really scream that masculine. So I can really envision this in a dark color. And Fusions Cast Iron, oh, be still my heart. You know, it's not a black, it's not a gray, it's cast iron. Just look at that color. Not that those two green colors were amazing. This cast iron is amazing in itself. So same process. I'm going to do the 220 sandpaper. I really like that smaller brush that I had in my stash. <laughs> that um, I think it's from the paint of the heirloom. I'm going to have to um, find that and link it for you all. That is a nice soft brush. But I want to distress the edges. It's just a look that I like. And you know, and when you get those bangs and bruises and things that happen to furniture, when something is crisply painted, you notice it. But when it's distressed, you don't notice it. It's just another character mark. Now, I don't want to go in with the power sander on these little detail edges or quickly all the paint will probably come off. So I'm just taking my hand and some 220 sandpaper and just gingerly giving it a sandy. Now if you left it unsanded it will take the wax differently. You can tell where you pre-sanded where it absorbs the wax in versus if you didn't sand it it's just kind of sitting on top of it. You need something um, sanded, something porous to help that wax soak into it. So I'm starting off with some black Jolie's wax, a little bit of the clear wax. Uh, on a darker place I really like to add the black wax to it. Um, that way you don't get any white chalky from the natural wax that does happen sometimes. And Chris made it home from work just in time to help me with the hardware. Oh you know that's not always the funnest job of measuring. And then these ones you we can't use the Craig um, jig on because the screws go from the front so he's going to measure i love these little library poles that i get off of i think they're library poles they're a type of pole i'm not necessarily sure they're a library pole but i get them off of amazon and i buy them in mass quantities the bulk quantity because i really like these and i do not know why they came with flathead screws i think when i used them before I changed them out for the black Phillips <laughs> screws because, um, yeah, flatheads are never fun. So, And this is really hard wood. Like I said, this really heavy wood. So he's going to pre-drill the holes. And then, like, these screws just would not go in at all. And we did not have any the size that we needed in a quantity that we needed. I could have, like, painted some up. I could have rub and buff them but yeah it's all about the size and when you need you know that many for this many drawers 
Ah, anyway, I, I felt I felt sorry for him stepping in, trying multiple screwdrivers because really they did they were just like little dickens. They just didn't want to go in. All right, so I was having a lot of problems putting the screws in because there was so much friction on these. And then it dawned on me that we had wax. So I put a little wax on the screw threads. Drop it in the hole. And cover it up with my fat hand so you can't see what I'm doing. But now it's so much easier. Unfortunately, I waited till I had two drawers done to figure this out. Hey, we've all been there. It's easy to comment while you're watching somebody do it than when you're in the process of doing it, that is for sure. I just love how this is sanding. I love how it's turning out. I hope that this body turns out as lovely as those drawers did. And now, talking about the drawers, I need to deal with... There was one that had a big stain in it. I don't know if they kept their sharp knives collection in there, but there's so many markups inside these drawers. I don't really understand it. So I'm going to go ahead and sand them. Hopefully that stain will stand off, which it ended up doing. But I'm going to go ahead and use some Howard's Restore in the Dark Walnut to try to bring these drawers back to life. Because the more I sanded, you could still kind of see those little marks. But I got everything evened out. And I know Restore and Finish does a lovely job on little scrapes like this. They look like brand new drawers. Yay! That's what it looked like before. That's what it looks like now. So I do hope that you so enjoyed, enjoyed today's yes. video. Yes. Oh my goodness. Like, do, do I use fusion? fusion? Do, I do I use milk paint? paint? I don't, I don't know. know. I, love I like them both, both so much. much. They, just both they both have, so have such amazing, amazing colors, colors amazing, amazing characters, characters to each one of the paints. So I do hope that you enjoyed today's video looking past that, uh, you know, furniture flipping is not for the week <laughs> sometimes, but yes. Just getting these items cleaned up, giving them new life, fixing any little problems that they may have, and just letting them just live on, and then just picking out what your favorite paint color is. So again, thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you next time, and you can see what we're up to. Bye!